Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode, we're going to be talking about some absolute carnage previews. The Rock got a BC Phoenix previews, and we're going to talk a little bit about the online nationals tournament that is happening this weekend as we speak. This is episode 325. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, for 5% off your order. Pre orders for Absolute Carnage are up on the website right now. So make sure you guys get those in. The set is released, I think, September 9th. So it's, it's coming up. It's close. It's like two weeks away. All right. So get those pre orders in, my guys. As always, I am joined by my nemesis, Simeon Bruce. What is going on, Simeon? Yeah. Make sure you uh, pre-order that Galactus as well, because if you've ever tried to buy one of the Golden Age Galactuses, you'll realize they've held their value, and this one will probably go up, and they're on the second issue of reorders, so second pre-order, I guess. So you're if, you're, yeah, if well, you're interested and you got the, the money... I mean, don't do it unless you're going to play the guy. But uh, yeah, sadly, you will be you'll be stuck paying at least a hundred dollars for quite a while. At the very least, yeah, I, I do think he'll only go up. So, Simeon, we always like to uh, start the week with what made us happy. What made you happy this week, my man? This week, what made me happy was I got a cool ship order in cool cool stuff shipment. Oh my gosh. Cool cool All ship right. stuff yeah. in order. <laughs> I close enough. My brain worked good sometimes. Uh, I got a cool stuff shipment and uh, finally got some prizing that we promised a while back. So uh, that'll finally be shipping out. And uh, I got some new maps. So I'm going mm. to frame them, put them on a wall, and tell my grandkids about how Heroclix used to be played physically one day. I'll be like, hey... This game used to be a tabletop game. They're like, it wasn't always roll 20 clicks? And I'll say, no, 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 no. Used to be real, real scary. You had to walk into venues and uh, people would throw dice at you. People being you, yourself, chucking dice all over the place is what I you mean, meant to say, right? I am notorious for poor a dice little bit. rolls. Yeah. Even my roll twenty dice uh, apparently go to like the edge and get stuck. So <laughs> it was great. A little, little Thursday throwdown on the YouTube shout out there. Uh, well, no, that's awesome. I I know we all love just getting in new new hero clicks to play with and whatnot. So I dig it. Mine is also about the same, except it was an internet trade. So I recently uh, bought some zombies. They finally got here this past week. I'm now only two zombies away from completing the Guardians of the Galaxy and Deadpool set zombies, so I only need Juggernaut and Dr. Octopus, and then I have a complete uh, new zombie set. I still need Hulk and Wolverine for the Supernova zombies, but I'm getting there. I'm getting close. I'm a slowly but surely type guy, you know, so I, I don't you know, go crazy rush, and I didn't buy them all. Guardians of the Galaxy and Deadpool came out because I was uh, a lot younger and a lot poorer uh, around that time so now that they're i can get them all for about 20 ish bucks that's what i'm doing so yeah i only need juggernaut and dr octopus for these zombies and then hulk and wolverine and they look really cool i need to buy another uh team base just to like display more of them on I think there i've got one because i Ooh. i don't have a single zombie chase but i have two of the team bases i might have to uh i have to get them from you what are there 16 zombies each team base holds a six so I, yeah i could use two i guess technically but some blank spots that's fine i'm gonna have to, I'll have to talk to you about that after the show maybe trade you for him or something but yeah i got those zombies i'm super excited i'm crazy excited probably quick little mini zombie story here my favorite was always red skull for just like lots of reasons and um one day when i was like cleaning he like fell off dropped his sculpt pop popped off I've never found his sculpt. So, like, I don't have Red Skull sculpt, which, like, oh, really no. sucks. If there's anyone out there who, like, has, like, a Red Skull zombie figure, but, like, doesn't have, like, the card or something, or somehow only has the sculpt or, like, whatever, or it was, like, a miss, 
dial base. I don't know. Or you just have a red skull that you might want to get rid of for cheap. I, I legit just need this sculpt and it bothers me so much that I cannot find it anywhere. And this is like, this was in my basement. This was like two years ago when I moved all my zombies and all my hero clicks. And I was like, that is inconvenient for me. Yeah. But uh, what made me happy was getting all these zombies. I love zombies. I need to play an all zombie game one of these days. Uh, I just love it so much. So we always, we did happy. That's cool. I want to really quick shout out our $10 patrons, which is Lucas Van Holland and Kevin Nelson. Thank you guys so much for uh, supporting the show. I also want to do some shout outs here. Some people that left us an iTunes review because we, th we've, they've been here for a while. Once I read the dates, I don't remember if we read them on the show before. I know I probably showed Cindy in this like a long time ago, but I don't remember the last time we actually read them on the show. So really quickly, uh, June 27th, Anthony B. Yup. That's me <laughs> in uh, parentheses. Pretty funny mm -hmm. says it's the best around. So he says Dial H is awesome for so many reasons. They take a fun approach to everything and play off each other so well. Calder is a fantastic captain of the ship and keeps a good level head while still having fun with Simeon and the podcast supporters. Simeon rounds up the Dial H formula perfectly, whether it be giving Calder a hard time or genuinely going in depth on a certain subject. Simeon is awesome. Just can't go wrong with this podcast. If I could rate it higher for the guys, I would. Uh, so we really crazy appreciate stuff like that. Like, uh, if you leave a review, that is awesome. And we just, we love people that listen and give us a little bit of feedback. It's so amazing. You guys have no idea. Uh, another quick review, WD Roker, Rocker. Sorry if I butchered your name. He says, my favorite Heroclix podcast, informative with great banner between the hosts, a great listen for Heroclix fans or people looking to get into the game. So thank you guys so much for leaving an iTunes review. And if you guys want to do that, if you have iTunes, you can leave a review. I think Podbean, Spotify, I don't know about their reviews. We just recently got on there anyways. So yeah, I think not entirely Spotify sure how and Stitcher are works. based on uh, like if it's an if it's something that you subscribe to. I don't think they do reviews, though. Oh, sure. Well, that's the way it is. Anyways, yeah. let's go ahead and jump into news, shall we? All right, Simeon. So, Rock Online yeah. Nationals. Speaking of uh, Kevin me about and Lucas, uh, the South Dakota boys made it into the finals. Right. Uh, at this point, the finals are still happening, and they are no longer in it. So, I'm assuming they made it to, like, top 16 or something, but I haven't seen the official standings. I haven't been following today as close. I was watching yesterday, um, ROC Nationals got off to a little bit of a rocky start. It was a, a big undertaking, so I'm not going to pretend like uh, everything was going to go smooth, but uh, they ended up getting under control, turned out pretty good, uh, it's still going on as we speak. We'll have a national champion probably in like four hours, three hours, two hours, oh, I don't cool. know, the amount of time that it takes to play two games um so yeah that happened yeah i uh, mean simi didn't partake uh, <laughs> uh simi just wanted to like be one of those guys who's like looking through a window like hello everybody yeah. <laughs> and uh, i was just crazy i'm just crazy busy this weekend i just don't have time for it yeah. uh it's just the way it is um so yeah we're gonna watching. go ahead uh i really don't yeah. like tell us, tell us about that competitive stuff and i really don't like uh roll 20 in general to be honest so um it did look like it was a lot of fun from the the few games that i managed to watch um uh mr clickso on the youtube and facebook uh, if you want to watch any of the games he has the only ones that got recorded he streamed those um maybe a few other people recorded their own games and will upload them but he definitely has a couple of games recorded so the game that I want to talk about, um, we're going to go a little in depth, just just a tiny bit, uh, was versus, it was Kenny Minx versus Jacob Bishop, and this was round four, both, I think it was table four, so they weren't the highest points, but they were both undefeated at this point, um, and I really liked Jacob Bishop's team, uh, so for obvious reasons, I'm running a Fantastic Four theme team in a charity event, and Jacob Bishop was running a Fantastic Four theme team in Nationals, and he he got to round four undefeated. 
uh, actually got to round five undefeated because he did end up winning this game. So that's pretty cool. He went to he went four and zero, and I didn't catch what happened in fifth round. I decided to go to bed instead of staying up till eleven. So his team, as with most Fantastic Four teams. It's variable as far as what ends up on the board. But uh, I'm assuming what happened is he starts the game with Silver Surfer. Um, Let's see. It's got to be Franklin Richards, Silver Surfer, uh, possibly Franklin Von Doom, and possibly the common Sue Storm. But the team that ends up getting played... uh, Silver Surfer gets swapped out for Wolverine. Um, so it's Wolverine, Black Leopard, Franklin Richards, the super rare thing, and Valeria Von Doom. So swapping Surfer out allows you to keep the... Uh, what's that lady's name? The bystander. Alicia Grimm. No, the Silver Surfer one. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, that's something Greenwood? Yeah, Don Greenwood. Okay. Oh, yeah. Enhancement and Silver Surfer shenanigans. So it basically just gives you a body blocker with enhancement and some other some other things. She's got sidestep, so she can help you equip. Uh, he had the space gem and spin ring. So spin ring goes to Valeria or someone that will be next to Valeria. She has the whole uh, placed one square, take a penetrating thing. So that works out really well with her. We've seen a few people use that. The space gem went on the super rare thing, which turns him into a really cool taxi with his 19 defend invincible and perplex. Um, That was a a move that I thought was really cool. Uh, Wolverine's just really hard to kill. Franklin Richards gives them all power cosmic as long as they stay within four squares. And then Black Leopard, of course, being the prime, he allows you to force your opponents to have the same stats as what he has as long as they're within six and line of fire. Uh, the game went pretty well. Uh, it was pretty even match. It was Kenny Minks was running a Batman Prime, Amanda Waller, Zatanna... Green Lantern, and then some starter set uh, Justice League stuff with Exospecs and Influence Ring. So his team was a little a little based on bumping up Batman's uh, damage and doing the whole ping damage to everyone. They played on the uh, Sentry, or not Sentry, the Sentinel uh, factory map. So that meant Batman couldn't really see a whole lot of the map and kind of hurt him. But the Fantastic Four theme team did pretty well, dropping opponents' attacks to a 10, having 19 defenses around, uh, Wolverine being pretty hard to KO, Franklin Richards being able to pop whatever powers he needs whenever he needs them. Um, I just thought it was a really fun team. And I think going forward, it's a team where if you build a Fantastic Four theme, these will at least be sidelined, if not main force. That's Wolverine, Black Leopard, Franklin Richards thing, and Valeria Von Doom. And sidelining Black Leopard allows you to, like, if your opponent doesn't have any stat modifiers, if they're, or if they don't have high stats, or, you know, if it's like a Wendigo swarm, maybe you drop Black Leopard and you throw, like, Franklin Von Doom on, or you throw, uh, I don't know, somebody else that's roughly the same points. You throw them on, and uh, I like that. I, yeah, I like the team. We're right on, right on. Uh, I guess the team I'm going to talk about is uh, also a top eight once again, Mister Click. So this is really the most info we even have is kind of based on like this streaming. Mister Click is the only guy allowed to stream, you know. So uh, go check out his YouTube channel if you want to see these games played. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I wasn't really interested in Rock Nationals. I um, I didn't have the time nor the care or want. Not trying to sound rude or anything. I just like uh, it happening and it not happening was basically the same thing for me. Um, so I'm not going to watch this game. I just kind of clicked on all his videos to see uh, what teams were being played. And this is a game uh, and I saw a team. That looks really cool. Simeon already watched this game, so we have that input. So I'm just going to talk about the team. I'm just trying to be transparent here, guys. 
I would never lie to you. Trust me. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk about old Tim bold here. So really, actually really quickly before I move on, I feel rude about skipping over your team that quickly. Um, I think it was interesting that he got rid of his prime slot on his fantastic four team. Uh, he made the choice between black leopard and then the lady ghost rider, uh, yeah. for the pseudo F4 retail, which is what you did, right? Right. Or at least you have her there for that. I like it. And he because, went with black. Leopard. Yeah. I like the retail because it triggers off of attack and not damage. So it's pretty good for that. Um, we, if you're in the competitive scene, uh, we're seeing a state of play where there's a lot of free damage that isn't based off of attacks. It's based off of like movement through somebody or moving someone or bringing someone into free poison them or, you know, that's how poison works. It's free. Uh, so with that, the Alejandra Jones prime actually is worse than a normal retaliator. Because you can damage someone, and if it wasn't based on an attack, she can't do the retaliation. But it's really cool if you get, like, mind-controlled from across the board, you can just pop over there because mind controls an attack. And it doesn't, doesn't even have to hit. It's just if an opposing character attacked a friendly character. So that's why I like her. But I think Black Leopard is the better prime out of the two. He just does a lot more. It's a lot of perplex on the team, too. Awesome. Yeah. You know, and like, would you you're basically saying like you're kind of in agreement that like you probably should have went with Black Leopard as at least the option of him is better than the option of her, would you say? Or are you glad that you went with uh, uh, the Ghost Ranger for the games I'm, that you've played so far? For the games I've played, I think Black Leopard would have helped, but I still find that Ghost Rider to be a really fun piece to play. Um, so in the charity event, it really doesn't matter if I win or lose. If I was being competitive, it would be really hard to decide between the two. Because Black Leopard also takes like ping damage. And that Ghost Rider has Invincible on one of her clicks. I think it's on her stop click. So at yeah. the very least, Ghost Rider can't be KO'd by free damage. Uh, they do have to make an attack at some point. And so... It's, it's a hard decision, and it sucks that you can't sideline like a prime and have a prime on your force and just swap one for one, but you can't. Um, right, so, yeah, yeah. I, I honestly don't know. I think in my yeah. case, I would have kept Ghost Rider either way, even though Black Leopard would have helped me in a few matches. Uh, he's got leadership, perplex, and potentially double perplex if uh, an opposing character has higher stats than him, but... Yeah, Ghost Rider's got a right. motorcycle that go fast. Oh, I got you, man. I got you. <laughs> I was just, I was curious. I was curious. Okay, uh, moving on. Like I said, we're gonna get into Tim Bold's team here, um, and I, I dig it. It's a little more unique uh, for a Black Widow build, so I like it a lot here. At least I think it's more unique than just like Black Widow to Captain Marvels or Black Widow Captain Marvel Immortal Hulk, et cetera, et cetera. So. Uh, Tim here, he's got Black Leopard as well, the uh, Making a Hair Medusa, Chase Black Widow, the Rare Phil Coulson, the Zephyr One Phil Coulson, and then a Red Aim Squad with the Nightbringer Ring being his only uh, equipment on the team or extra bit here. So it's it's pretty simple, right? Um, making sure everybody has a 17 defense means the hair only needs to hit a, uh, a six, you know, yeah. and then it's going to have Empower, um, Phil Coulson can also choose Perplex or Prob. Obviously, Black Widow can, he's moving them all the way up the map. She can drop down a recruit. The recruit can then attack or poison, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, she can choose. And I think this actually gives you more options with recruits, right? If you want to, you could go with the close combat expert recruit, especially when you're making their stats a lot worse or a lot more average or not really worse, but uh, manageable with Black Leopard. That's the correct right. really word to use. Yeah. So, it also I, no, I it really gets rid of do. modifiers. So if they That's have true. like a 17 with energy shield, they just have a 17 because their stat cannot be higher than his printed value. So even if you perplex Black Leopard up, their stats stay whatever his printed value is, and it doesn't affect friendly characters. It's only opposing. So he's just he does a lot of stuff for a lot of manipulation for his points. Yeah. 
I and I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, I love it. I just think it's a really cool team. Not going to lie. Uh, I don't know what Nightbringer does. I can't remember. There are so many rings. They all do something. I can I think that's look it up here. Stealth, stealth and I, one square. Probably night. Like night sure sounds like stealth. It's a good thing for, I guess, Black Widow to make sure you, she's always in stealth, protected. So, Or whatever he's using it for. Like I said, I didn't watch the game. Sorry, Tim, uh, Scott. <laughs> um but uh, it's nothing personal. It's just uh, I don't care. Anyways, uh, <laughs> it's a cool team, and I I dig it. That <laughs> uh, Actually, no, it is a really cool team. It, I dig it a lot. It was a very interesting match. Uh, Phil Coulson moved up to the. So if you're looking at the map here, Calder, the bottom left water terrain. Phil carried yes. him up to there. Uh, Scott blew up some hind- or some blocking with a tri sentinel. And then got a shot on Phil with uh, Dark Phoenix. And so he lost the ability to carry everyone, which meant Tim had to, like, single Mm. file walk everybody to the fight. But it still worked out for him. He still managed to get everybody to places where they could just kill stuff. And uh, it was surprising, but, I mean, clearly he had planned on that. Yeah, right. But that's cool. I dig that. That is tough when you just do your normal carry move up and then someone's already able to attack you and mess with your with your other moves, especially when it's King's Tomb is the map. So it's a fairly enclosed little... It all has all these little different sections, really, of the map, you know, with all these walls and stuff. So, yeah, you kind of had to really go for it there to make a shot like that happen. So, yeah, that's that's cool. I dig it. So that is my rock team I want to talk about. I thought it was neat. You know, I mean, yeah, it's still Chase Black Widow, so like negative points. Sorry, Tim. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it was a, a more unique way. Yeah, I've seen it. Now I also don't play a ton of competitive stuff, but like the last tournament I went to, I didn't see a team at all like this. So I'm really, I think it's really cool. This team made it to a uh, stop it. For uh, sure. Do you want to yeah. just go ahead and talk about the uh, the previews we got this week, Simeon? Yeah. So enough of Nash. You want to start us off? But here's yeah, the- a top prize for nationals. Um, <laughs> so uh, the only way to get this figure, if you you haven't been paying attention, is to place well in nationals or pay someone who placed well in nationals or get one of those uh, super secret eBay uh, auctions that somehow, you know, leak out there. Um, not naming names, but... Uh, uh-huh. I'm, sure, I'm sure some of the people that win it will sell it for multiple hundreds of dollars but anyhow we're talking about the lady phoenix the last of the 10 million bc avengers so she comes in with as guardian avengers phoenix force cosmic and past keywords i like those those are all good keywords as guardian kind of hard to build with in modern now but plenty of golden age options she comes in at 175 or 125 for points uh, the, the 50 difference will get you two clicks of Invincible with 12 attack Pensai and 5 damage Outwit. She's Power Cosmic, Flight, uh, normal combat symbols other than those. Uh, she's got three big old traits. And so let's see one more thing. She sees through blocking. She sees through blocking and destroys it after targeting through it. So she'll be on the market eventually. Uh, it's going to be rough for most people to get one unless you really want to shell out the money. But she, her first trait is Odin's Close Confidant. Uh, free. If Lady Phoenix is, an, uh, is adjacent to a friendly character named Odin, heal both characters one click. That's pretty solid. It's going to be great in uh, throwing her in with the BC Odin or just any Odin. There's plenty to choose from. Her second trait is Before Life Dominated the Cosmos. Opposing characters within three squares can't use willpower. I like that. I wish it was like five squares for her points. Uh, Three squares when she's got a very range-heavy dial kind of sucks, but uh, getting rid of willpower is pretty big. Um, getting rid of willpower and then your opponent has to decide if they're going to clear every other turn or if they're going to push Uh, that's pretty good uh ancient incarnation phoenix edition that's her last trait and this is a similar trait to the other 10 million bc 
when another friendly character named Phoenix, Dark Phoenix, or Jean Grey hits after resolutions, remove an action token from this character. So she'll pair really well with the retaliation figures. Uh, most Jean Greys don't make great attacks. They're more like a TK kind of thing. But I guess you can you can throw objects or something. Who knows? Uh, mm -hmm. So... 175 points will get you 8 clicks of life. The last 2 clicks are phasing 11 attack with poison and 18 defense with regen. Uh, she has 1 special attack power, and that's her only special power, her whole dial. So she gets those on clicks 4 through 6, and that's with a 12 attack and then 2 11s and prob for the first two clicks of that and it is pulse wave when lady phoenix uses it to target more than one character she deals her printed damage instead and so that's four damage four damage and then three damage for the three clicks that she has that uh a lot of people looking at that power a lot of people saying you know 125 points you knock her to click two technically four uh second click of the 125 point dial and then she's a sidestep 12 attack 17 defense four damage with a pulse wave that can potentially hit everyone on their team for four also everyone on your team if you position bad uh eight range with two lightning bolts so top dial i like her uh i think she'll be a great addition to the 10 million bc avengers uh, being able to see through blocking means she can like pulse wave through a wall, which is pretty cool. Uh, it also sucks because it means you won't be able to like barrier to protect your team. You're just going to take that full four damage as well. Um, but yeah, I don't see her being crazy competitive because if you do push her to that pulse wave, if that's like your plan, you've got to see one, two, three, four. Uh, five damage psychic blast or pulse wave or whatever will take her out and she's only got a 17 defense on that click so maybe someone will make it work but I don't know I think she's just a cool sculpt yeah I think something to note it's like a bummer is that she's not a two by two like how a lot of people sort of speculated you know there was no reason to why not? Or I guess think otherwise. So because yeah. all the other phoenixes were two by twos, we got we yeah, just we got kind a of set like that had two um, phoenixes. You know, uh, but she's not. Her sculpt is really cool for a single base figure, though. I'll I'll absolutely give them that. Um, and it looks pretty big in this um, whatever digital rendition of the sculpt. So I do hope it's a it's also pretty hefty, pretty pretty big sculpt here. That'd be sweet. But if it has to fit in one of those whatever card stock like boxes that they have le's in it's then like sideways it, yeah yeah the little tips fire might be a little bent um she has a tough she power is, that's uh, stronger than a celestial that's on toughness yeah that's what her toughness name is that's hilarious sure um sure. you're that's actually tough. not stronger than any of the <laughs> celestials that we've had recently um Sorry, Lady Phoenix. She's not great. Um, I don't want to rag on her or anything. I don't think she's good. But uh, you know what? She's a figure that exists. Uh, Chris uh, is a huge uh, Avengers BC fan. So I would love... The only bad thing is this figure is going to be wacky expensive. Um, but if people are interested in kind of grouping together, and if we all do like five or so bucks like a person, so we can try to get Chris this figure, because he, he really wanted to like... He only wants to buy one more Hero Clicks figure, and he wants pretty, pretty much just Lady Phoenix. So if we could all buy that for him. Um, if you guys don't know who Chris is, he was the host of the show before he left and joined uh, the Army last year, actually around this time before Simeon got on. But um, yeah, if there's any interest in that at all, message the page. Let me know. I might make a public post about it. Um, but she is going to be dummy expensive. That yeah. is for sure. Like, she be upwards of $300. So... Um, that probably won't even like work out. Like, even if we get like, we would need a hundred people, three bucks each, right? That's insane, uh, for how expensive she'll probably be. So, but just something to keep in mind, you know, uh, especially if people want to donate more, you know, since he is serving, that'd be really cool. And he definitely deserves it. So let me know. That's all I want to say. 
Uh, besides that, no, I think she's garbage. I would never want to own one, <laughs> but um, she, she does. So I'm just throwing that out there for him. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to some good previews. I mean, the other previews we had this week. Uh, Clicked off got some previews from Absolute Carnage here. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the Superior Spider-Man Super Rare. We also get to see his signature equipment. This is, of course, uh, Doc Ock as Spider-Man when that was a thing. He has four range, one bolt. He has Indomitable for his only special combat symbol. He's 85 points. Spider-Man ally team ability, which is wild card, which is cool. Uh, he has Avengers, Sinister Syndicate, Spider-Man family, and Scientist. So that's pretty sweet. And pretty much the basic keywords that Doc Ock Spidey gets. He also has improved movement, ignores hindering terrain, and elevated terrain. He has one special power and then one trait that just gives him his equipment. So his special power is Charge Flurry Plasticity, which is awesome. So top dial, he's got Charge Flurry Plasticity with a 9 speed, 11 attack, precision strike, 18 defense with super senses, and then Perplex, which is pretty neat. Sadly, no reducers his whole dial. He does have Perplex for three clicks. Then he goes on to Exploit Weakness for two. Prob on his last two clicks, which is probably when he needs it the most because on his last three clicks, or his last four, he has Combat Reflexes, and on his last three, he has Steel Energy uh, and Sidestep. So that's kind of cool. Uh, on his click, he has Charge. He is the one the one click of Charge on his dial, besides the Charge that obviously like, comes with the Charge Flurry Plasticity. So you can like sidestep around, use your prop to heal up, and then maybe charge to uh, to heal again, and then get back to your little uh, plasticity flurry. Sadly, never has flurry with steel energy, which is rough, but that's just the way it be sometimes. He's uh, he's all right. What is what do the arms give him though? How do they help him? The effect is he has giant reach too. So his charge flurry plasticity went from being five squares to a seven square reach. At the beginning of your turn, roll a d6. This character has the listed effect until your next turn, which is one through two. It's modify attack and defense plus one. So that is solid. So all of a sudden, his top dial is a 19 defense, 12 attack, and he has perplex to throw around. Uh, on a three through four, he has incapacitate is free. So maybe you charge up giant reach, whatever. Then you have four range, and you can shoot someone within four range or punch someone within two squares uh, with free in cap, which is great. Uh, that's a great follow through when you go ahead and you do this big alpha. Let's just assume like you TKM, whatever. He charge flurries two squares away. You know, that's seven square reach, 13 square reach for the TK. And he punks you for like three damage twice or like whatever you decide to do. Right. And then you also say, and it's going to be harder for you to retaliate against me. There's a token. So in cap for free is great. It's a great follow through. And even better is on a five or six with his uh, Waldo arms is free make an attack. So potentially he can make three attacks when he does his little charge flurry. If you roll a five through six, all of these are good. Like none of them are bad effects. Like normally when you have to roll a D six with your object, you're like, ah, oh, man, I've got a chance to unequip it yeah. or a chance. Nothing happens. There's blah, blah, no blah. But like, this is just like, these are all these are all positive, and I think that's probably because it's ten points, and it only guarantees you giant reach two, which right. the oc the oc arms, the normal oc arms, already give you giant reach two, also flurry, also ignores I think what hindering and elevated. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Whatever. No, yeah. But like they give you a lot for ten points, and being a heavy. This is also the same thing. Unequip or equip any unequip drop, and it's a heavy, and then free make an attack is is dope. Uh, incapacity is free, solid, and attack and defense plus one. Stat mods are good. So I like this. I like this uh, this auto Octavius. I don't care about him as a character, so I'm not going to get him. But he has solid equipment. I don't know if they're better. They aren't better than the Ock Arms. But no. um, they are a solid substitute if you want to sort of take a little bit of a risk. They're not better, but um, no, they're cool. I like it's this funny. guy. We have technically. Two yeah. Ock arms in modern. They're not really Ock arms. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, technically, you know, kind of, yeah. They were designed by Octavius, and they are arms. So. That's, what I'm That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I like that uh, right, go for it. <laughs> in the current game where your sideline is full of uh, trouble alerts and troublemakers, this guy could potentially bring in a troublemaker all by himself because you've got a three through six that lets you make another attack. So if you charge flurry, let's say you hit both and then you in cap as free, that's your three attacks that hit. And then you just pop in brainiac and do something or whatever. Mm. Um, or alternatively you miss all three attacks. Uh, you know, you bring in one of the other guys. So that's kind of neat. 
Uh, 85 points is the exact same amount as the Captain America Spider-Man, who has the split dial that he can heal back and forth um, with, like, the super set, super, super senses, which is, like, a 50-50 shape change on one dial. So, I don't know if this guy is better than that one, but he's different enough mm. that he's at least interesting. I think the other one's way more mobile and has a better, like, defensive dial. Uh, but, yeah, the free attacks means this guy can get in your face and do a lot of stuff. And then the last, the last of the news this week was Jack O'Lantern, the Pumpkin Man, the uh, Halloween King of Halloween Town, whatever his name is. Uh He's got two mm, real sure. names because he's too real for you. Uh, he's a rare number 041 in the set. He has a secret identity. We don't know which characters can turn into him, but we can see his dial. It's a running shot on both dials. His secret identity dial is three clicks long. His normal dial is six clicks long. He's got some pulse wave, and then he's missing all of his attack powers in clicks one through four because his one trait is pumpkin bombs object and we have not seen that yet it's number zero zero one for objects s zero zero one so holding out hope that maybe it's a common object i don't know uh i figure if it would have came with this guy they would have shown it but uh there's a bunch of people that use pumpkin bombs so who knows uh, he's also got a trait that Smoke Cloud is free, but only to generate three markers. When an opposing character occupying one of his smoke markers makes an attack, characters they would target can use shape change. And that's pretty cool. Uh, it's not too hard to move out of Smoke Cloud, so you might like tie them down with some plasticity. And then if they swing on the person with plasticity, well, they've got shape change, so... That's neat. Well, right on. I dig him. I think he's pretty cool. Uh, just kind of like a simple little character here. It's a much needed version because the last Jack Lantern we had was in Civil War. So yeah. I'm always cool with getting newer versions of these characters. And this guy is all cool. And you know what else I like about this? Instead of having sculpt reuse and just making another a Samuel or a Jason Jack Lantern, they're just like, hey, you know what? They basically do the same thing. <laughs> They're like, like yeah. he's a dude on a hover thing. He throws <laughs> bombs, you know. Like so, I instead of making it an easy sculpture use, they're just like, you know what? This might even be the lazier route. I don't even care. It's better than getting two of the same dude. Like so, they're just like, yeah, slash Jason and Sam can be, you know, whoever you can play whichever one you want when you're playing this Jack Lantern. Yeah. So that's cool. I don't know the character yeah. from comics enough to like gripe about that. Like Sam's nothing like uh jason how dare they compare the two uh, with the same dial i have no idea maybe they're completely different but i have no idea oh right on that uh that wraps us for, up for news so let's go ahead and jump into the community section there are dozens of us dozens community tuesdays every tuesday we go ahead and ask you guys a question about, uh, about some cool stuff in the community. So Community Tuesday's question was, if you could errata one character in modern, who would it be and what would you change? I only have one on Twitter. So I'll have you read one on Facebook, I read one on Twitter, and then you read one on Facebook. Sound good, Simeon? Yeah. All right. I'm going to start with Corey right. Sampson. Yeah. Uh, always enjoy what they have to say. Um, so they start with, I would mega errata chase 017 Black Widow because I'm a big fan of the character and this piece is too good. I would errata all of her traits and special powers. Uh, the patient's trait limited to line of fire. I should have pulled up what that is. Uh, the opportunity trait reduced to three trade craft tokens. I believe that's the one that brings in the widow recruits. And I think yeah. patience is the one that like nukes your stat mods and you can't use powers. Okay. So that's the line dial. of fire. Yeah. Uh, and then... Oh, sorry, web... nope, that's her prop. Excuse me, that's her prop, guys. Oh, that's the... I would agree with that one, absolutely. That's then. the map-wide prob limit. Yep. Um, the opportunity trait might be the, the outwit can't use kind of thing. 
And then uh, yeah. the web special power once per game. Oh, this is the bring them in thing. Uh, web special power once per game per initiate or recruit. She can only generate one of each, which I think is fair. I don't know. I, I watched I, a game. I yeah, I watched an ROC Nationals game where someone was running two of these and they brought in probably like five or six recruits or whichever one does the poison. And it's just, yeah, it's like, I'm going to phase over here, free pull in this person, poison you because that character hasn't moved this game or this turn. They just got placed from outside the game. Uh, and it's penetrating poison. So, yeah. And so with that's two Black really Widows, it's just two damage. I think about it. Black Widow should definitely be Silver Ring. She does way too much to not be a Silver Ring character. I can't believe I never thought about it until now. I guess I never yeah. thought about playing two of them. I'm a decent human being who would never do that. <laughs> uh, all right, sorry, Simi, keep going. Oh, that was it. Uh, yeah, oh, that was it. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, those right three on. things uh, he is what he would say would need a ratted. All right. Uh, so, super fan Christian Bogan on Twitter says, "Vulture, plain and simple, make his charge after KOing a figure a free action. No more banking charges to decimate a whole team." Yeah, Vulture's a little rough. Um, there's certainly a lot of tactics nowadays to go against him, but uh, still, seeing a Vulture means you got a plan for it when you build your team. You have to. Uh, if you didn't, it sucks, and you just lose, uh, yeah. especially if your team has like a bunch of cheaper characters, you know? Yeah, Vulture existing basically means you can't play an all Wendigo team I mean, <laughs> and like other stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, you did. You did, and you got really far with it. You just got crazy lucky. Yeah. Uh, no offense. I, I did lose to the Vulture team that day. I did lose to okay. that one. Oh, you did? I, just, okay. I still managed to make it to like top eight or whatever the cut was. Um, and then in my game against Chip, that is also up on our YouTube. Uh, he's playing a Vulture double Jason team, which is just real bad all around for Fantastic Four because I'm not super mobile and his team is, and it can also hit me from almost across the map. Jason's got a crazy mind control reach. So that's fun. Yeah. Got a sidestep with eight squares. Let's let's calm I mean, down. But, but no improved targeting to like the back of the board. If you're I mean, characters yeah, are spread yeah, out. Yeah, of course. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All so right. that's Twitter. I'll There's also one more read Loyal Miller's comment here. He says I would have said Vulture before rotation, but he is needed to keep monsters at bay, probably post-rotation. Would be Black Widow or Chase Batman. Ooh. So, uh, Black Widow, Chase, or Batman. Um, of course, talking about the Prime Batman with the full map range, uh, he just needs line of fire. So if there's walls or something, or body blockers, then he can't see them. But... Uh, Otherwise, yeah, he can just see the full map, and it uh, it's equally kind of interesting. I don't know if a Batman <laughs> made it into the top of Nationals. I'm assuming one did on one team. Microphone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know it was uh, at least on Kevin and Lucas's teams. Correct. So at least that Batman made it in to, like, the top cut, but uh, I don't know. Right on. All right. <laughs> Next up, let's go ahead and do a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. He says, power combos, quite a lengthy list of what goes together. Today's example is that due to close. Being part of all three, you can get away with charge, blades, claws, fangs, and exploit weakness. Uh, FF011 Wolverine at 40 points can be quite lethal. It's a really cool uh, little Wolverine gif there. So yeah, Charge Flurry Blades is, uh, sorry, Charge Blades, Exploit Weakness, very powerful combo, being able to use three, right? Um, just I just want to go into it a little bit here. So yes, you can charge uh, Blades, Claws, Fangs, and Exploit. You cannot charge Flurry, Blades, Claws, Fangs, Exploit. You can, however, charge Flurry, uh, Blades, Claws, Fangs, absolutely. The difference being uh, Flurry is close, make up to two close attacks, and then uh, Exploit Weakness is close, make a close attack, damage dealt by this attack is penetrating. And then the the way Blades reads is that when you make a close, uh, you can use it with it. So it's uh, Exploit Weakness and uh, and Flurry don't stack, thank goodness. But um, yeah, 
just just something to keep in mind about certain wordings how you might need to be an english major to fully understand how this game works uh yeah. what else do you have, do you have you got anything to say about this simeon uh yeah i think one of the better i'll say like i think the uh maybe best point for point close attacker in the game right now is actually the rare franklin richards because i can give him charge flurry uh like precision strike i can give him charge precision battle fury get around shape change and super senses i can give him charge flurry blades uh well he's got it solid damage so there's not really any reason to do that if you're playing him with Wolverine, Wolverine can hit and then just give him Flurry through Wolverine's trait. And then he becomes like way more mobile. You can do like sidestep charge, battle fury. Uh, so yeah, it's good to know the combos when you've got pieces that can just exploit the combos oh, yeah. to the full effect. Absolutely. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. I want you guys to make sure check out our Facebook and Twitter, where we're going to be posting every time a new podcast goes up or a video goes up on the YouTube channel, we go ahead and share it there. Uh, same thing, Community Tuesday's question and the voting for Thursday Throwdown is all on Facebook, Twitter. We have an Instagram. All I do is post the Thursday Throwdown thumbnails as their own images on Instagram. That's it. But if you want to follow us for Dial H Hero Clicks on Instagram, same thing on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash Dial H for Hero Clicks. Twitter, we are Dial H4. That's the number four. Hero Clicks, that's the only place it's the number four. If you want to email us into the show or uh, send us any kind of questions at all, you can do so on Twitter or Facebook or uh, send it to our email at uh, Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. That's all spelled out, Dial H for Hero Clicks. And uh, of course, check out our YouTube channel. We do a lot of cool content on our YouTube channel. I love making YouTube videos. I think it's super fun. We don't get a lot of views. That's cool. I really don't care. I just think it's awesome and fun. And I want more people to enjoy our YouTube channel because we're doing a lot of a lot of work. We're doing stuff on our YouTube channel that no other YouTuber does. We don't just open stuff or just blah, 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 stream games. We are doing the Thursday Throwdown, which is, yeah, playing games. We're going through every single Hero Click set ever made. Last week, we played Streets of Gotham versus Batman. This next week, we're playing Fear Itself versus uh, Amazing Spider-Man, which is really cool. So make sure you guys check out our YouTube channel. We also do some skitty, skit, skitty, some skit, skit videos. Yeah, skit, skit. Uh, some skit videos, and uh, we're going to do a ton of normal gameplay videos and they'll all be fun they won't all be like 300 modern and boring as heck to watch so uh we do all sorts of cool stuff so make sure you guys check that out that's all i have to say simeon anything you want to say before we go ahead and yeah. show speaking of boring as heck to watch uh finals uh, team is going to be vulture versus vulture so i expect a lot of barrier or literally just whoever wins the roll off because uh mm -hmm. Yeah, you could just roll off for nationals. So uh, whoever wins the roll off, I guess, technically wins. But uh, just play otherwise, it. uh, it'll just who be... are the uh, players? Uh, it's going to be Adam Friedman and Joe Gualtieri. Oh. I don't know. What Adam, Adam Friedman is all about, all about taking that roll off. I mean, I, I yeah. wasn't going to say it, but uh, yeah, Team Worlds, I think he rolled off in finals. So. Yeah, he did, baby. He's all about that roll. He's all about that rolling off. Like, <laughs> I mean, when it makes sense, it makes right. sense. I just don't think it ever does make sense. So, yeah. So, right. with, Go that, ahead and read out. <laughs> with that, uh, I'm going to say Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. If you heard any of the figures or teams that we mentioned today and you want to pick up some of those figures, pick them up at CoolStuffInc.com. They got them. 5% off code is dial5. You'll save 5% and the more you buy, the more you save. You'll rack up those uh, savings real quick. So, you know, pre-order some stuff. Do all the things. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. All right. Happy trails. <laughs> Mutt, 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 mutt